Welcome everyone to another edition of Marketing the Invisible. My name is Tom Poland, beaming out to his ever from Little Castaways Beach in Queensland, Australia. Joined today by Rich Sheffron. Rich, uh, g'day, sir. Very warm welcome. Where are you? Where are you hanging out? I am in Delray Beach, Florida. Sounds like a nice spot to be. Uh, for those of you who don't know Rich, you must have been living in a, a cave because he is one of the founding fathers of online marketing. He's uh, w- literally one of the world's top experts on online business strategy. He's coached uh, a Rolodex of who's who in the world of I- internet marketing. Most of the internet, uh, the people that I respect and uh, hold in high esteem based on their integrity and the results in the internet marketing world have been mentored by Rich. Uh, he's come out of retirement. Uh, he's got, the, the, if, if I read his whole bio, it, it's kind of, it would rival war and peace for credentials and length. <laughs> he's, uh, he's got, for example, just plucking one thing out of the air, he's got a, 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 a testimonial from Agora about how he helped them get to $1 billion of extra revenue. That's, I mean, you can't live on a billion dollars, right, Rich? But it's a good start, yeah? Yeah, that's a start. I um, wish I would have negotiated a piece of that, but right. unfortunately not. Um, <laughs> I I, I want to add as well that Rich is just an extraordinarily generous person. I remember getting something from you for free, and uh, it was about strategic alliances. Uh, it was it was it was a giveaway, but it was something that had been previously sold for for, for a lot of money, and rightly so because it was chock full of value. And and everyone I speak to, and it was the inestimable Bob Bly who introduced us, Rich, um, speak so highly of not only your integrity, but your generosity. So delighted to have you on your show. I think without Thank further you. ado, we will announce the title, which is the number one key to breakthrough online growth. And we're going to kick off and I'm folks today. So wanted to have Rich on the show. I'm throwing away our seven minute timer. We'll go through the same questions, but we might take a little deviation here and there where there's when I can smell some gold. <laughs> So, Rich, let's kick off with question number one, though. Who's your ideal client? Yeah, it's very wide open these days, which is always generally a bad answer for marketers. But, right. Um, anyone that uses online marketing to grow, to either make money, grow a business, et cetera, is ultimately a client of ours or a potential client of ours based on uh, some of the products that we've recently released, like in the last two years. Um, really it's so wide open. So, you know, the same product that we are is become our flagship is great for agency owners. It's great for coaches and consultants, as well as people who are trying to scale a business online. So, which will make sense, I think, as, as we, as we go on. So the common denominator are people wanting to get growth online. Would that be fair? Yeah. And uh, so question number two is what's the problem you solve? And we were talking before the interview it, it sounded very much like, if I, if I could paraphrase it, that the problem you solve is people feel like they're a voice in a crowd of screaming people. Mm. Uh, how, how would you define the problem you solve? We know it's about growth, but, but what is the problem or the potential that people are looking for when they become a client of yours? Well, I would say that, you know, if they are not satisfied with the performance of their marketing at the end of the day, like we that's the problem that we solve the so that's the starting point really that if the marketing is not performing as well as it should or as they hoped or etc not powering the growth that they want then that's what we solve and the i don't know if i should go further with that yeah please let's do yeah yeah Yeah, anything you think might Um, be relevant yeah so the what most people don't realize is that there are strategies, tactics, channels, et cetera, that can at one moment in time be insanely powerful, but that over time it degrades. Right. And that's pretty much consistent with everything as far as marketing online. And so the only, the only exception to that can be tremendously great creative, like an amazing copy or something like that. But that's outside the reach of most people. Right. So, you know, like I'll give you an example. So when I brought the VSL to Agora, it was back in 2007. Just let me explain to folks, VSL Um, is the video sales letter. Yeah, video sales letter. It was invented by John Benson. 
Uh, he's the creator of it. He invented it at the end of 2005. He first did it for a client in 2006. I saw that and brought it to Agora like soon thereafter, early 2007. When Agora used that, and that's what the testimonial from them, from Bill Bonner and uh, Mark Ford says, uh, when I brought it over to them, immediately uh, conversion rates went up 400% in the US, 300% in France, 250% in Germany. And all they did was take the sales letters that they had and copy and paste it into uh, a PowerPoint, white, you know, white background, black text, that's it. That's it. right. And just to give a full arc of that story. Right. So John Benson invented it at the end of 2005. The very first course on video sales letters didn't come out until 2010. Wow. And that was the three X VSL method by John Benson. And the but Agora got those benefits in 2007, 8, 9, 10. Right. By 2017, there was absolutely zero difference between a regular sales letter and a VSL the way that Agora had been doing it. So zero, right? And so what most people don't realize is that you were either there for the beginning or you don't get the benefit that like you could get. And you know, a year later when I invented automated webinars, like we had the same thing. Like the show up rates were 80%. The registration rates were high. Like, you Incredible. know, because there wasn't, it wasn't the way it is now, right? Yep. And so every marketing, you know, or if you were early on in AdWords or early on in Facebook, right? Like there was yep. a time when it was very easy. Yep. The time is over now, right? Yep. Like now it's easier to make something work on YouTube than it is on Facebook. And if you don't know that, you could be pounding your head against the wall to try and make Facebook work. So there are these levers, but what's more important than the lever itself is also the timing. And because not only does performance degrade on any channel, any tactic, any strategy, but the effort that's involved to get the result increases over time. So you have one graph, which is results, they're going down, yeah. right? Like if I can, yeah, like, yeah, let's see. I got there. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like going down, right? And then, uh, but then the effort to get the result is going up. So you have this like moment in time, right, over here where it's, high results, low effort, right? And then it goes down and up. And so now all of a sudden on this side is high effort, not great results, right? Yeah. Yeah. And but if, if someone looks at their marketing arsenal, their marketing mix, the, you know, the assets that they're using, and none of them are anything that is new, like not anything that has been introduced in the last 12 months or 18 months, then probably everything in their mix is stuff that everybody knows. And if you're using stuff that everybody knows, there's not really the advantage to propel you forward. Mm -hmm. And gotcha. what I think most people miss these days is that that's the primary way of growth online. And so whether people realize that or not, they should take a step back and look at the businesses that they know that are successful online. I'm not talking about you know VC funded, but entrepreneurial driven uh, and how they grew and what was their primary way of growth. And generally it can be reduced down to a channel, a strategy or a tactic that they got on before the rest of their industry did, the other people, right? And yep. so like I got known because back in 2006, um, I wrote a free report. And back when I wrote that free report, I, you know, my problem was, is that I got great results for clients like Ryan Dice and Russell Brunson and those guys, but nobody wanted business coaching back in 2006 and nobody knew who I was. And so I wrote a free report, like hoping to get a dozen clients, just put it on my blog. It's called the Internet Business Manifesto. And then that ended up going viral. And so it's been downloaded millions of times and totally took me from unknown to known and built a list, built a business, et cetera. And for the next year and a half from, you know, I, that first report, the Internet Business Manifesto I wrote in June of 2006 till 2008, I wrote six more free reports. And that's how I like 
my built my whole business just by writing free reports, putting them on my blog and having affiliates mail for it. And that that was a very effective strategy in 2006, 2007, 2008. In 2009, the book Free, written by Chris Anderson, the editor of Wired magazine, like was talking about this new like concept about giving stuff away for free to sell your product. But by that time, that's <laughs> when everybody knows. And there's no doubt, right, that if someone were to start today, like if they thought they could put a free report on their blog and that somehow they'd have millions of dollars like a month or two later, that's not going to happen because the window has already closed for that. Right. So, you, so that's what I'm talking about as far as this idea that there are asymmetric kind of rewards for stuff that is new online because they grab attention and it's not clear yet as obvious that I'm trying to sell you something, right? It's like stealth camouflage kind of selling. Right. And, and, and so what I'm hearing is that once the thing becomes commonplace, it becomes it doesn't get the cut through that that it needs to get in order to get noticed. If it doesn't get noticed, it doesn't get acted on. So you, there's two things. There's, there's there's the the lever or the platform or the tactic or whatever it is, the VSL or the free report, but it's also the timing. And it, right. it's I, I almost hate to use the analogy, but it sounds a bit like multi-level marketing. If you don't get in at the top, it's going to be too late. And, and, you know, it's kind of like when I got to the share market, everyone was in there. And so, yeah. So, you know, if the taxi driver is telling me about the best stock to buy, it's probably time to get out. Right. Right. But the good news is, is that there's always something. Right. So it's just a question of like figuring out like what it is now or what's next. Right. Or, or you know, it's like, it shouldn't be shocking, right, that there might be an opportunity right now no. on TikTok, no. <laughs> right? Like, that should not be shocking to anyone. No. Uh, now, finding out, like, what if it is and what's working, like, you either can come to, like, a service like mine or you can just, you know, keep your ears open and eyes open, rather, and um, and pay attention to anything that, that gets you to pay attention. Exactly. Anything that you notice that's different and new, and I can give you a ton of different examples of like what's working now. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the gist. Anytime someone sees something and stops and says, what is that? Right. There's something to it. So we need to prick up our ears. So we don't necessarily have to be the innovator, the one person that comes up with the one idea at the right time. We might be able to kind of hang onto their shirt tails and, and go along for the ride if I'm mixing my metaphors up. So maybe, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe just three or four examples of what you think is hot right now. Sure. Yeah. So, um, so something that like we talked to our group about um, recently, like a couple months ago, was um, one that is called interactive um, sales letters. Like the, it's like a video sales letter, but they're interactive. And this was shared with me by Daniel Levis, who's a copywriter. Yeah. And um, he's, he changed his um, application funnel for his coaching program uh, from the standard model, which is, uh, you know, opt, you know, add opt in VSL application. Right. Like that's the process. So there are two different companies uh, that you can do this with one is uh video asked the other is go tolstoy like the writer tolstoy go tolstoy uh, both of them are platforms where you can do interactive video and so daniel levis has it where he you know you get to this one the difference is is that instead of people going through multi-pages they stay on one page it's a seamless experience and the number of people that he was able to get into his coaching program grew from like grew from like about 200 to 300%. Like the conversion rates were that much higher. The show up rate was higher. Everything was higher. And it makes sense when I explain why. Right. So it's an interactive video. And Daniel does three different questions throughout. And the first question is, are you B2B or B2C? And then, you know, they click a button on it and right. then it keeps talking. Yeah. And the next question is, which niche are you most closely aligned with health wealth or relationships and they answer and then he keeps talking and then the last one is like are you a small medium or large business and he attaches numbers to those three different uh you know categories right and so between those three questions there's two answers for the first one three answers for the second and three for the third so it's two times three is six 
times another three is 18. There's 18 buckets that someone could fall into. Gotcha. And as soon as they finish that third question, Daniel then goes into a case study about someone very similar to them who's in B2B or B2C like them, who's in the same niche as them, who has a similar business than they had, and that's now at the next level, right? And then invites them to apply and set up a call, but like while he's talking them through it, right on the video, because they never have to leave that video, it's all seen. Right. And that has a higher engagement rate right out of the gate, right? Because it's new and novel. Right. And then in addition, the message is more catered to them and they're being kind of pre-sold before they get on even on the call. Right. And so that would be an example yeah. of something that's working really well now. But I'll give you another one that's in the same field because this one is very much um, working like right now. And it will be something that in a year and a half from now will be a problem. Right. <laughs> and that is, is that, um, and it's funny because a friend of mine, uh, Rudy Maurer, who runs a lot of the brands for Ty Lopez, like he's the, he sits on top of Pier One and Radio Shack and all the brands that they bought. Mm. And he called me because he has a coaching program and he was like, I heard that there's a, been a change in the way they're being sold. And uh, I heard that like, I should talk to you about it. I was like, yeah, I'll send you the, the thing that we did on it, you know, the segment. And so uh, this one came from a gentleman by the name of Cole Gordon. Cole is the guy that has set up the phone rooms for a lot of gurus that want to have phone sales, but want to keep it totally in-house. Like they don't trust, and there's a lot of good right. reasons not right. to trust other right. people because they can damage your reputation so fast. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so anyway, he's done it with like Traffic and Funnels and... Aaron Fletcher and a bunch of bigger companies too. He's also worked with Agora. And so, uh, so I did a call, I did a, you know, a segment with him and he started that by telling me that outbound is the new inbound. And so that was the premise of the, of the segment. And what he was talking about was that the standard process, right, is the way I was explaining it the way Daniel used to do it, right? Opt-in page, video, right, application. Instead, it's opt-in, but it also has optional phone number, like, and then as soon as the person, this is just one of seven different funnels that he went over, right? Um, but when they're watching the video, there's an outbound call to that person while they're engaged, right? And that that's an extra call that's being added to the, to the sequence, right? And that extra call is taking a very like leadership concierge role. It's just like what brought you to the site, seeing if they can give them something right now for free as a gift that like kind of fits like where they're at and setting up like the future call, et cetera. So there's already that first touch point. And, um, and so very interesting segment. And mm. actually I done a segment with the guys from Traffic and Funnels, uh, Chris Evans, and he was telling me that they had started sending out more content to their list and sending them to the blog, and then people could opt in for a content expansion, you know, and uh, that they were making an extra, you know, mid six figures a month because they were doing that. And I was like, I don't understand how you're making an extra six figures just by that. But it's because when they're on the site getting their content expansion, that's when also a phone call is happening out right, there, right? Right. So I asked the guys from Traffic and Funnels about it, and they said, oh, yeah, we switched to outbound, and that's now responsible for about 90% of our sales. Oof. Wow. Our outbound starts, like, the first contact starts outbound. Right. So, like, that's a strategy right now. It's very effective, right? You can bet, you know, dollars to donuts, right, that it, as more people start doing that at some point in time, whether it's, Eight months from now, whether it's a year and a half from now, two years from now, people are not going to appreciate that call. Right. right now, they do. They feel like this business really cares. It's novel. So when they start getting calls from every business, like right. every website they right. go to, it's going to be a different story. So very effective now. Interesting. Um, okay. The next one that this one was shared by also two different people kind of overlapping. Um, it's about discovery ads for YouTube. So Alaric Heck was talking about how, you know, it's a great opportunity right now to grow your channel, 
uh, if you have an organic YouTube channel by using discovery ads and that they're very inexpensive and discovery ads just for people who don't know when it when you're watching a YouTube video some of the suggested videos on the right hand side are discovery ads okay and then also if you search by keyword sometimes a few of the top ones will also be discovery ads right and generally it's you're advertising your organic content like you know and um and so alaric just was talking about it as a like right now it's very useful to use it's very inexpensive and it can reduce your overall advertising rates for several reasons i then also did one with ian stanley and ian stanley has teaches people it's one of the best actual biz ops out there because i'm generally not a fan of biz op at all um because they don't they don't work um but <laughs> Good uh, he teaches people how to be uh email copywriters and there's a million businesses out there that don't manage their lists well that you can you can actually have a career i mean you're not gonna get rich but you can make you know sure six figures as an email copywriter relatively easily anyway so he uses discovery ads as well and if you have an organic channel on youtube you have to link it to your google account until you link it to your google account you can't you know you don't get the benefit of having an organic account because you can retarget anyone that watches your organic videos once your organic youtube account is linked to your, your advertising account right you can't go back and you can only go to the point where you link those up. And um, so what Ian is doing is he's spending five bucks a day on discovery ads, right, to get his videos. And then he retargeting on YouTube is relatively cheap as well. It's very cheap, actually. So once he retargets anyone who watches any of his videos, right? right? So the people that come to his videos through discovery ads are the same as people who came to it organically. And he had spent on just five dollars a day. He is selling high-end coaching clients wow. through this whole process of moving people through, um, you know, discovery ad to channel to then seeing other ads and then ultimately being taken off site. And uh, let's see, there's other ones that are a little bit more complicated, but those are examples I would say right. um, of different different strategies that are currently working right now. Um, you know, another thing I could just like share is that yeah, whereas I don't know of any marketer who has gotten any ads to work from YouTube or Facebook on, or Instagram on TikTok, I know lots of marketers who have ads that worked on TikTok that work on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube like that format works on all channels right the uh which is interesting i don't know yet how to apply that but it's something to think about well certainly test it on you on TikTok, and if you get it working go to the other channels maybe but yeah, yeah that is interesting so the key point i think here folks is that there are innovations you don't necessarily have to be the innovator but you have to keep your eyes and ears open and notice what you are noticing because there might be an opportunity to jump on that particular bandwagon before it um, rides off the cliff one day it will right? and what and what I would say is, is that you don't need, not every element of your business needs to be this, you, but you need one. Like, right. you know, like when I released my free reports, like I was using regular email, a regular blog, like what was the thing at that moment was free content that was valuable. Yes. That made a sale. Yes. You know, when I did the webinars, like it was the same thing, like everything else was normal, like the standard stuff everyone else was using. So my point is, is that you don't need a hundred of these things, but there should be one element in part of your marketing arsenal that is relatively new that your competitors are not using. And if, and you should spend some time looking for that thing and recognize, and it could be in any other industry, but it's not yet been in your industry. So your prospects are not like familiar with it. Your competitors aren't using it. And, and the, the process of innovation it's necessary that people are going to fail, people are going to trip over. But if you can hang off, if you can notice what is working somewhere, you know, perhaps you could avoid a lot of those, a lot of that downtime and wasted money. But it's either way, it's it's fascinating stuff. And 
essentially what you're saying is that really the only competitive advantage that's sustainable is is innovation. You've got to have something that's timing. T- timing. Yeah, the, the one competitive advantage that cannot be copied is timing. Perfect. You know. Yeah. All right. So let's. Um, so so terrific stuff. Strategic, but also lots of examples to flesh out those concepts. Let's. Um, let me let me give you question five. I've skipped a couple because I think we covered them adequately, and lots of value has gone out anyway. What what would you say would be one valuable free action? Where what, where could someone go from here to start the process of exploration or innovation or timing? What what's what's one one step in the right direction you'd recommend people take? I would say that they should pay more close attention to the people that they buy from, that the places that they shop from, right. and notice anything that is new to them when they first notice that. Like, you know, they're, all of these things are hidden in plain sight. You know, it, 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 they're out there. It's just a question of whether you can spot them or not. You know, and you're not going to spot all of them, that's for sure. But you only need to spot one. Uh, you know, at any given point. So I would say that, you know, recognize that some percentage of your time, and I'm not necessarily saying a lot of it, maybe 5%, maybe 10%, but some amount of your time recognizing that if you look at what your marketing arsenal is right now and you don't have anything that you would say is cutting edge or, you know, something that's relatively new, then you should spend 5%, 10% of your time to, on the lookout for those things. Go to different marketers' sites, opt into their stuff, see what they're doing, see if it's anything different than what you're doing, right? right. Um, most of the time, it's not going to be found in a course because generally it takes a few years or at least a year or two for something to get out in a course. Um, so generally, it, you know, there might be a few in a course, but that's not – the amount of time invested. Courses are great for what they are. They're just not great for the latest and greatest usually. Yep. Yeah. So I would say that and be willing to test, but recognize that when I speak to most people, if they get honest about it, they've never spent any time like looking for this. And so the first thing is to recognize one, that there is this kind of time element that is involved with marketing and that, you know, looking at what, the people that you look up to that you know are doing well, what they're doing is a start, um, ideally not in your industry, so that you have the opportunity to be first in your industry and experiment. You know, there's, you know, at the end of the day, putting your own spin on things. Like the reason I wrote a free report was that um, I was listening to a Dan Kennedy um program uh, for coaches and consultants. And at that moment in time, I had my coaching program. Nobody knew me, right? And so I'm listening, like, very eagerly. And I will always remember the question and Dan's answer because, like, I can't believe that I thought this way once, but I did. So, you know, um, but so I had this great coaching program getting people great results, but I felt like I needed new front end products, you know, low price products to acquire new customers. And then I would need, you know, mid tier products. And I would need, like, I needed this whole like built out business in order to do well. And, um, and I didn't know what to put in these front end products, these low price products, because I had all this great stuff in my coaching program, but I was afraid to take anything from my coaching program because I was afraid I'd cannibalize my coaching program. Right. So I'm listening to this Q&A session that is at the end of what Dan presented, and this coach asked the exact question that I was thinking, which is I have, like, this coaching program, but I don't know what to put in these lower price products to acquire customers because I'm afraid I'll cannibalize. And Dan just laughed at him, like, literally started, like, chuckling, and he said... These were his exact words. He's like, Bubba, he said, Bubba, you don't get it. Um, you put your best ideas in those products because that's what's going to get people to want to join your coaching program. Right, right. And I was like, and that was news to me. Back in like, you know, 2005-ish or whenever I was listening to it, I was like, that was news to me. And the more I thought about it, I was like, well, if that's true, then what if I just gave it all away for like what not all my good ideas, but what if I gave a bunch of good ideas away just absolutely free? Yep. And what if I gave people, gave affiliates, you know, 25 percent of the coaching, like just for giving away a free, valuable report? And uh, and so that's what I tried. 
right? Like that, it was just an experiment, but it was based on Dan saying what he said and based on like what I know about online marketing and maybe like asking affiliates to just give away something highly valuable and we'll take care of all the selling and do everything from there. Maybe that's enough. And it was enough. And so I didn't have to build a lot of front end products and I didn't have to do all these things, but it was because like I was willing to experiment. Yes. Yes. And, and, you know, and, I, and we, we all want this thing that's going to stay true and certain deliver results for ad infinitum for eternity. But unfortunately, it just doesn't yeah. exist. So some, no, someone's, someone's going to move the cheese, right? Yeah. I mean, people are always shocked. Like I wrote a report on automated webinars in early 2008, like laying out the, like how it should work, like the whole model that's still used today. And people were shocked. Like, why would you do that? Like, and I'm like, if I, if I thought I could actually do it forever and no one would know about it, I would certainly keep it to yourself. Possibly choose that. But that's not on the table. That's not an option. We're it's, gonna it's, you, you, do it anyway, so I might get credit as the guy that invented it. Right, right. So it's gonna have a use by date, so you may as well get it out before that expires. Yeah. So let's direct yeah. Rich, let's go to um, your website. We we're gonna we've gonna you're gonna set up a, a special page, strategicprofits.com. Right forward slash J, J A Y. What are people going to find when they go there? Yeah. So they're going to find, this was a book that, um, Jay Abraham used, uh, at the most recent, uh, Anthony Robbins, like super high end mastermind. Uh, Jay had called me because he was giving away one of his books and none of his books have really the internet component in it. And he felt that that was necessary. Right. And so we took, seven of the segments that I'm talking about, um, like the examples I was giving you, and he, Jay titled it, um, whoops, uh, Getting Everything You Can Out of All That's Hot Online, which is like a takeoff of his book, Getting Everything You Can From All That You've Got. Right. And this has uh, strategies in here from Tim Bird, who has uh, Ad Secrets, which is uh, one of the best uh, Facebook groups out there for media buyers, people like he's got several yeah. thousand in there that yeah. pay him 97 bucks a month. Uh, Fernando Cruz, who's the head marketer for legacy, which is one of the best divisions of Agora was until it was just sold for, uh, $3 billion. Um, Jordan Menard, who is the top media buyer. I'll give you an example of another one, just from yeah. Jordan. Um, it's not the one that's in the book. The one in the book is about how to produce new angles, but, uh, Jordan shared a strategy with me. This was like about uh, 18 months ago. So its effectiveness is a little less than where it was, but it still works. And uh, he showed me in split tests, he had three split tests. He had one for Bob Proctor, who's a client of his, one for the Morrison brothers, who's also a client of his, and one Agora property. And uh, he did a split test with Facebook ads and uh, all he changed was two words, the first two words of the Facebook post um, in the ad. And the two words that he added were, it's true, dot, dot, dot. And it's true, dot, 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 boosted the click-through rate by about 50 to 70%. Um, and uh, kind of shocking. Um, but anyway, so uh, Jordan Russell Brunson has uh, his favorite funnel, the funnel that actually has built more click funnel than any other funnel and one that he spends over a million dollars a month on that's cash flow positive and then Alaric tech talking about youtube retargeting and why it's so effective and how to do it and joe Schreifer and molly mahoney so it's seven different uh strategies that people can have and we are planning on selling it on amazon but uh for your listeners they can get it free by just going to strategicprofits.com forward slash J, J A Y, all lowercase. Rich Sheffron, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the, on, the, on the show. I'm so glad we threw away the seven minute timer. Um, folks, hope you enjoyed that. Go get that book for free, strategicprofits.com forward slash J. Rich, you're a scholar and a gentleman. Thanks very much. Well, my pleasure. I do, I want to answer that last question. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. That's my bad. Question seven, kind of our trademark question. What's the one question I should have asked you but didn't? Yeah, you wouldn't know to ask me this question, but since I'm asking myself the question and delivering the answer, let me tell you. Um, I, I want to share what I did to launch my coaching, like my, my coaching, and, okay. 
And, and it's something I've taught to numerous people and, and the people who've done it have done very well and done the same. So, you know, I, I, it was the very first time I got a chance to speak where I was going to sell something. And I'm not a really, I'm a great marketer because I'm a bad salesperson. Um, so, uh, so you got to be good at one or the other. About, yeah. I was quite concerned about selling from stage, especially with other sharks speaking, right? Um, cause I, that's not me. And so instead I decided that to avoid the possibility of there not being anyone getting up and buying better to like kind of make sure that that's not even an option. So I'll, I'll, I'll make it application only. So there's no reason to rush. You could just fill out the application and, you know, et cetera. And then, well, what could I do to get people to want to fill out the application? And I could, well, I could put a really strong guarantee. And so my original guarantee when I started my coaching program, and it was the first group of people that I coached, and those were Dice and those guys, um, it was, you will, you know, it was a year long program. You will double the amount that you're currently making and you will be working half as much by the time we're done. So you'll like four X your return on your, like on your hour. And there were several hundred people in the room and that guarantee got, you know, especially when I reinforced it, got quite a few people to apply. Right. So you're basically guaranteeing right that i'm going to be at 4x in a year from now or all the money i pay you is gonna you know be returned to me and i'm doing private coaching at this point this right. is not like a group program right like um there's some group components but i'm talking to everyone individually too yes and um so i had about 40 some odd like 47 48 40, i don't remember how many but 40 some odd yeah. apply yeah but I then spoke to every single person for 15 minutes because I only accepted the people who I felt I could actually deliver that for, yeah. right? Like, so put a big guarantee out there. If you have the opportunity to talk to a good, you know, some amount of your prospects, put a strong guarantee out there, make it by application only, but then only accept the people into the program who you actually could deliver on that. Right. And that'll be, you know, I never worked harder than that year because like <laughs> I didn't have a program. I didn't know, but I knew that these people were winners. I felt, and I felt like I could help them. Right. Yeah. But it was that. And then it was my delivering that result for those people. Right. So that I didn't have to refund anyone's money um, that their results went into the internet business manifesto so the internet business manifesto like reeked of proof and it was the proof of those people who i had built the program on and so i was talking to them individually like twice a month i was doing group like lessons for the group those group lessons were based on the individual calls that i had so they were based on what i was felt they needed right that's what i was teaching right so my my entire program was built out by delivering to that one group, then that was what I ended up selling automated for the next 10 years, right? Like that exact program. Amazing. And yeah. I had case studies. I had everything from that initial group. And that inital group was gotten by a over-the-top guarantee right. application where I would... Uh, not ex I would only accept the people that and, I could and careful on. selection. So there was actually a heck of a lot of yeah. integrity around that. And last question, bonus question, I better wrap up yeah. in another 30 seconds. Do you think that the marketplace responds a lot better when they sense you have skin in the game? You're offering all the money back after you've worked for people for 12 months. People are going, wow, Rich must really believe in this. I think there's a part of that. I also think that, you know, the it's, you know, on the one hand, people think that that's a tremendous investment, and it, it certainly is, right? Like, I'm, I'm willing to risk a lot. But also, the likelihood of someone doing, like, being dishonest with you after you've been personally talking to them for, as a coach, yes. where people have opened up to you, yes. like, you know, it's, they're, they're, they're on your side. 
Right. They they're not like wanting they one they want the outcome, but you know if you're a good coach, odds are is that they've also grown to like, trust, and bond with you, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think partly that. And then the other thing I would say, which like just as an added bonus tip, um, there is no excuse, like zero, for a coach not to be a great marketer. Because the questions that marketers like, like would love to know the, the real answers to are the questions that coaches get answered like at the beginning of a conversation, right? Yeah. So a lot of times in all the free reports I wrote, uh, one of the most common uh, feedback I got was it felt like you were just standing right over my shoulder, like you were describing music, like me. Music to my and, ears. Yeah. You know, yeah. If you coach a lot of people, it's, you don't have to hear the stories that many times to see the, the commonalities that are in all of them. But people generally won't open up to anybody like that. They are opening up to you because you're here to help them. And that is the exact information that is like the gold when it comes to marketing. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Rich, thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for checking out our Marketing the Invisible podcast. If you like what we're doing here, please head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. It's very much appreciated. And if you want to generate five fresh leads in just five hours, then check out www.5hourchallenge.com.